Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden, and today I'm here to talk about some of my recent DNFs and also some of the books I have recently removed from my TBR. Um, so I don't DNF books very often, so when I say recent, this is like from quite a long span of time. Um, let me actually check. This is from pretty much from May of last year to March of this year. Um, and I don't have that many to talk about, but let's get into this. The first one is Give the Dark My Love by Beth Ravis. Now this is one of those books that like, honestly, I'm like, why did I even <laughs> think I would like this? Um, because this is a book about necromancy, which I don't enjoy reading about. Um, and I think it's also a villain origin story, which I also don't like reading about. So I don't know why I thought this would work for me. Um, but I, this is one of those books that I had from the library and I was trying to hurry up and finish a bunch of those because I needed to return them. I think that was, I think this one was one of those. Um, and I had read like the first chapter or two and like, it just wasn't like, like I've said many times before, if I DNF, which is rarely, it is almost always the very beginning of a book because I'm like, wait, this is not the kind of book I thought I was going to be reading. Um, like not in the sense of like, oh, I can't enjoy a book that surprises me. But there's like a very specific feeling of like, I don't think I'm reading the book that I thought I was going to be reading. This was one of those. I was just kind of like, I don't know if I want to read this anymore. And then I looked up the synopsis and like reviews and I'm like, wait a second, <laughs> this has two big things in it that I really don't like. I don't want to read this. And that was that. Um, the next one I am sad about, um, it's An Extraordinary Union by Alyssa Cole. Alyssa Cole is a very beloved romance author and I definitely still want to read some stuff from her. Um, I really want to read her historical romance novellas. Those sound really good. This is a full-length novel, um, historical romance, and we're following, I'm sorry, I don't have the book with me and I don't remember the characters' names, but our female lead, um, she is a black woman who is undercover in the South. Um, so she's a free woman, but she's undercover as a slave because it's set during the Civil War and she's working on the side of the North of the Union. Um, and then the male lead is a white man who is, um, he's kind of, he's similarly, he's also undercover. He's working on the side of the Union, um, but he's like pretending to be like a, a Confederate soldier. And I really liked the female character. Um, I just didn't care about the male lead very much and he wasn't like terrible. Like I have read some truly awful love interests and he wasn't awful, but I didn't like him. And especially compared to the fact that I really did like the male, the female character, just by comparison, I was like, you can do better <laughs> to the female character. It's like, you can do better than him. Um, another thing that I really didn't like is just something I really hate in, in romance books where like, the f the female character is telling him, I'm sorry, I can't use names. I don't remember their names. Um, but the female character is like saying stop to the love interest, to the male lead, and he doesn't. And it's like, we know, cause we're in her head that she is att attracted to him and she's enjoying like making out with him and whatever. But all he's hearing is like, no, I told you like, and she has told him several times that she doesn't want to get distracted with this right now, that she needs to focus. And he, doesn't take her word for it. And it's kind of, it's like, I don't know if that's supposed to be like a turn on or what. I really don't like that. And that has happened, had happened several times in the book at the point that I DNF'd it. And I do think some of the spy elements could have been interesting. Um, and I, I think I enjoyed some parts of the plot. I'm, this is like a year ago, so I'm trying to remember. Um, I think I did like some parts of the plot, but when it's a romance book and you really don't like the romance, it's kind of hard to come back from that. <laughs> Next is Grim Lovelies by Megan Shepard. Um, and this one is the first book in a duology. And I actually was really enjoying the first chunk of this book. Um, but then it got to a point where I realized like, oh yeah, this premise is like, the part I actually <laughs> care about is like over now, basically. Um, so this is a historical fantasy. And our main character is somebody known as a beastie, which like basically they are animals who are turned into people. Um, and I think, so like at the beginning of the book, you know this from the synopsis, um, their like guardian, I think is killed. Um, and so now there's like a, a ticking clock basically. And our main character ha has to like go with her friends and try to figure out something to save them because um, without that, then they're going to turn back into animals um, at the end of a certain amount of time because their creator has died. And I actually really liked the setting of the house. I was enjoying getting to know the characters, but like that was the part that I liked. And then when I realized it was gonna be like a road trip, just basically the way the plot was going, I was not thinking I would enjoy. I also really didn't like the romance that was being set up and the character I actually found most interesting, who I think would have made a much more interesting love interest, um, well, I, it doesn't go well. <laughs> like I looked up reviews for this book and for the sequel because I wanted to spoil myself. And then thankfully my friend Julia gave me the rundown. So I know what I was not missing. And yeah, I would have been so frustrated if I read this book or even like continued the series. And then that's what happened at the end. So yeah, did not, 
did not feel like I wanted to continue that one. Next is The Furies of Calderon by Jim Butcher, and this was actually going to be a buddy read between me and my friend Katie at A Sea of Tomes. We um, did not end up buddy reading this one because I DNF'd it. <laughs> Uh, I don't remember if Katie DNF'd it too, but we did end up reading Small Spaces later, which we both really enjoyed, so that was good. But um, yeah, this is a very well-known fantasy series. It's kind of the one that's like the Roman Legion, but with Pokemon, um, which is an interesting premise. And I just... Uh, this is another one. Like, I read only the first chapter, and I'm like, this is not for me. <laughs> um, like, maybe I would come back to it someday, but just, like, even from the very beginning, the way that the female characters' bodies were described was very, very off-putting to me, and I know that that's kind of a thing in some Jim, but Jim Butcher books, and I have heard from people who really love him that, like, he does get better about that later on, which is good to hear. I'm not saying I would never read something from him. I'm not even saying I would never come back to this book, maybe, but I was just really not in the mood for it, and I was just so bored, and I realized that, like, I don't know if this is from things I've heard about the series or just the impression I get, but this feels like one of those series where it's like, oh yeah, you just gotta push through and then from book four on it's amazing and it's like I don't want to force myself through something that I don't want to read. Um, so yeah, I DNF'd that and I'm like that's one of the oldest books I think on my TBR so I'm happy to have made a decision about that one. Next is A World Without Princes by Saman Choinani and this one I'm sad about because I actually really enjoyed the first book in this series. Um, this is the, the second one. It's like a really interesting take on fantasy and like fairy tale tropes and I really liked the female friendship and I, I really enjoy some of the characters. Um, I thought the world was interesting and just like as a person who enjoys fairy tales and fairy tale retellings and talking about those like tropes, I just found it a very interesting book and I really liked um, some of the decisions that he made in the first one. And then like he just undoes that in the second book and this one seems to be very very polarizing. Like I know that a lot of people really liked what he was saying about gender roles. I know a lot of people really didn't like it and at the point I DNF'd in the book, I realize I have not been telling you like when I DNF'd these, <laughs> most of them. I'm sorry about that. I was not as prepared for this video as I thought I was, but I had gotten like a decent chunk in, but I feel like this book was setting up to undo the things that the first book accomplished. And when I read reviews, like and when I read some of the negative reviews, um, I really don't like the choices he made and I also like this one character, Tedros, I actually enjoyed him in the first book or and I thought he had some some good potential. Um, but the things that he has like said or done in this second book, I'm like, I think it's gonna be really hard for an author to like come back from that, like for him, like to make his character likable to me again. And I also didn't like the way that like this book is setting up as it's supposed to be a commentary on sexism but the way it's doing it is kind of like reinforcing sexism. Like now it's like a girls versus boys situation and the girls are portrayed as these horrible monsters for like deciding that they don't need a romantic relationship if, with a boy if they don't want one and it's like that's true though. Um, and like they're set up as like really now they're they're like bullying the boys and they're like really mistreating the boys and it's like the the way that too that like their just their appearances are described as like um like, well, you can tell that they've gone over to the dark side because they've let themselves go. And it's like, these are like tween girls. And like, why why are we doing this? So yeah, um, I think this could have been an interesting idea and it could have been handled in a good way. But from the impression I got and then based on other reviews I read too, I don't think I'm gonna like the way that he does it in this book, which is disappointing. And then the last and most recent DNF I'm gonna talk about is High Fire by Owen Colfer. Um, obviously I love the Artemis Fowl books and I knew that there's a chance this book wouldn't work for me and this is actually one that like I stopped reading. This is another library book that I was like, I need to finish this! Um, or like make a decision about it. So I felt like there was a, a time crunch and I just didn't feel like forcing myself through this book I wasn't liking very much. So like I was saying, I knew there was a chance that I wouldn't get on with this one and it's... <sighs> There are some interesting ideas about the story. It's like there's a, a dragon character who's like very snarky and there's this like teenage boy who like, um, this is set in Louisiana by the way, who like finds a dragon and I think he ends up like going to work for the dragon or something. It's like a contemporary setting but there's a little bit of magic in it. Um, and that part was interesting. Like I think that's an interesting idea. I thought some of the writing was clever but the one of the big things that really turned me off this book is that one of the perspectives that we're following is just like absolutely disgusting to be in their head. Um, and that's his, I don't even remember his name, but like he's a dirty cop who has done a lot of really despicable things. And one of the things that was just very like unpleasant to read, really disgusting to be in his head for is like him thinking about the ways that he is going to um, like force the main character's mother 
to like have sex with him um like the way that he's going to like like coerce her um into a sexual relationship which is assault and it's just just like the whole perspective on on women was like really disgusting and it's supposed to be like this character is the is the villain and he's supposed to be a really disgusting human being but I just didn't like being in his head and like even though some ideas about the story were interesting it wasn't enough to make up for that um to make up for that character like I liked the other two main characters more obviously um and I, I think some of the ideas were interesting but I just I wasn't loving the book anyway and then to have this character who I just hated every time we were in their perspective I was like I don't feel like reading this and this was an initially one that I was thinking I would maybe circle back to at some point but I've just decided like I really don't want to <laughs> like I actually I just don't want to read this book um I still love the Artemis Fowl books and I have read other things by Owen Colford that I enjoyed I still definitely want to read other things from him but this one is just not for me uh so those are the recent DNFs and when I say recent I pretty much just mean since I did one of these videos last time um because I don't DNF very often but um now I'm going to talk about some books that I have recently taken off my Goodreads TBR um because I think this is kind of an interesting like I don't know I'm talking about DNFs this might be kind of another piece of the puzzle of like this decision making process of like how we choose which books we want to read and um sometimes when that decision changes so these are in no particular order and there are various reasons for these which I will get to obviously. The first book is Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. Um, I still intend to finish the Immortal Devices trilogy. Um, I read the first book and I thought it was fine. I have heard they get better so I am still going to finish that series. And I had initially I think put this book on my TBR because I like historical fantasy and Cassandra Clare's historical fantasy books are the ones that appeal to me the most out of everything she's written. But even if I do end up enjoying the next two books in the Infernal Devices trilogy significantly more, I just don't have any interest in Chain of Gold because, like, I should never put this on my TBR. One of my absolute least favorite tropes is following the kids of the main characters from the other books. I know that's something a lot of people love. I do not at all. <laughs> and I have no interest in reading that. So that was like a pretty easy decision, honestly, and I should have made it a lot earlier. The next book on this list is actually one in a series I really love, but I will explain why it's on here. Um, and that is The Kingdom of Gods by N.K. Jemisin. So I loved The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms. It's one of my favorite books I read in 2020. And I also really liked the sequel, although not quite as much. But this third book, I read like the summary and I looked at reviews and I don't really like the way the plot is going. Like I feel very content with how the first two books wrapped up. And another big thing that I don't like really want to read in this third one is like the main character it's following because these are companion books. I like them as a side character. I really don't think I would like them as a main character though. Um, and also there are some specific things with like the romantic relationship in, in this third book that I think are icky and just like are weird and I don't want to don't really want to read that. So even though I really enjoyed what I've read from N.K. Jemisin before, I don't think this the third book is going to be for me. This is one I'm actually kind of bummed about and that is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. Um, and this is not because I think this is like a bad book or something. Like I know that some people have really enjoyed it. These Violent Delights is set in 1920s Shanghai and it's a retelling of Romeo and Juliet. Um, but the, there are specific reasons that I have decided not to read this one. And the biggest one is that I have found out that there is a ton of like medical gore and medical horror in this book. And that is something I do not want to read like at all. Um, so that is why this one is no longer on my TBR. So even though I was really excited about this one, I think it sounds like a really interesting idea. I love Shakespeare retellings. Um, and I know that other people have enjoyed this book. I just don't think it's for me. Um, next is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Maharan. <sighs> this seems to be a very polarizing book, but I know there are a lot of fans for it. I actually owned the first book. Um, I will be unhauling it though. And I was excited to read this one, but like the thing that kind of pushed me, like I had been thinking for a while, I'm like, I'm not sure this is actually going to be my thing. But the thing that really like pushed me over into like deciding, no, this is definitely not for me, is um, I, I just really think the sense of humor in these books is really not going to jive with mine um like at all <laughs> and specifically I heard there's this like one like joke or like meme that was going around that I thought was like a like silly joke that like fans were making about the series and it's not it's like an actual like plot point in the novel and like I just can't believe that like the fact that big titty Liddy is like not only actually in the book but is a like pivotal plot point. Like that was a big sign that I think the humor in this book and my sense of humor are not going to align. Um, and there are various other reasons that I like don't think I would maybe enjoy that book as much. Like I don't think 
I don't think I'd like the female character much either. I've heard mixed things about the side characters and like the romance and everything. Next is The Island of Dr. Moreau by H.G. Wells. This is the classic and the only reason I had been planning to read this is because I really want to read um, The Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter by Theodora Goss. That's the first book in a series that is like retelling classic stories, like classic horror stories or um, like monster stories or like detective stories in some cases. Um, and I really do think I'm gonna like that series. But my friend Kelly from Cozy Reader Kelly read this this story like somewhat recently and just really didn't like it and the, and like I don't think I would really like it either. I was really only going, going to read it for that book series and I think I'm just gonna like read a summary if I need to because um, it's like a classic I have never had any interest in <laughs> except for I wanted to read a book series that incorporates some of that element like some of those elements into the book and um, I don't think I want to force myself through that one especially because I read um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde for the same reason to read that book series and really didn't like it so I think I should go with my instinct on The Island of Dr. Moreau also not being for me. And then next is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. Um, I think my on-haul video has gone up before this, so you will have already heard my whole spiel on this one. Um, but basically, I don't think I would like this book. Um, I don't really like V.E. Schwab as an author. I don't like the way that she writes female characters or the way that she talks about, like, women in general. Um, like, I, from what I can tell, part of her whole brand is, like, she's living out the not-like-other-girls attitude in her real life, um, which I just... I don't love. I mean, she probably wouldn't want my readership anyway because I wear makeup. Like, I'm sure she's, like, not a bad person. I just, like, I feel like we had moved past the, like, not like other girls thing and I think she's bringing it back and I don't want it. <laughs> like, there are ways that you can have female characters who feel like they don't have, like, a support network or, like, they don't, like, they're, they're struggling to find people who share their interests. Like, you can have that. You can write about that and you can make that part of your story without hating on other women for doing things differently than you or for having different interests for you or for, like, God forbid, wearing a dress and not hating it or something. I know I always complain about this, so it's probably very repetitive, but it just really, really bugs me. Next is Admission by Julie Buxbaum. This is a contemporary that is inspired by the admission scandal that happened either last year or the year before that um, in, like, several different universities and I thought this sounded like a really interesting concept but um, my friend Kelly who I mentioned earlier she talked about this book in a wrap-up and it just sounded like really not great. Like there are actually quite a few reviews of this one that are not very positive. Like the characters all sound terrible. Like it sounds like the author really didn't deliver on like the premise or like actually engaging with these conversations and like I just it just does not sound good. Next is Everybody Shines which is edited by Cassandra Newbold and this looks like and is marketed like it's a collection of like body positive stories all centering fat characters. I'll link the wrap-up down below where Beautifully Bookish Bethany talks about this book because it like it's just not what I thought it was going to be because it's just not what the marketing makes it sound like. Apparently these stories are actually like quite depressing most of them like they're about like the main characters like experiencing fat phobia and like people being really awful about their body and like just like low self-esteem and all of that and like just not that not that those stories aren't important but this collection seemed like it was supposed to be much more like positive and like hopeful and uplifting and that's not apparently what actually happened in it. Next is Muse by Brittany Cavallero. Um, this one, I like the premise sounded interesting. It's like an alternate history and I think it's set at the Chicago World's Fair. I think it might be an alternate history where like, it might be one of those where like America has like a, a royal family, I think. And then um, I heard some reviews that were like not great. I know Amanda from The Curly Reader really didn't like this one. And also like, so I read A Study in Charlotte a couple years ago and there were some very specific things about it that I that were that I really really didn't like the way they were handled that I had never heard people talk about in reviews and they were there were specific things where it's like I don't know that I trust Brittany Cavallero in her other books either like I'm sure she's a lovely person and I'm not saying like maybe someday there will be a book premise from her that like really really excites me and I want to give a chance also I think A Study in Charlotte was her first book so maybe she's grown past that but I just had a lot of issues with the way that eating disorders it, it felt like eating disorders were romanticized in that book. Um, not that they were ever identified as such, but that's what it read like to me. Um, and it was it was very unpleasant for me personally to read. And 
I just, I think I would have a hard time picking up another of her books and not feeling like I might get hit with that again. But that feeling, plus the negative reviews that I heard, just made me think maybe I don't actually want to read this book. Um, next is The Bookish Life of Nina Hill by Abby Waxman. This one, like, I was hearing really good things about it, and I feel like lately there's been more mixed opinions. This is one of those, like, oh, the girl's an introvert, and then she, like, is forced to go out and interact with people and it's great or something like those kind of stories. Um, I think she ends up finding out that she has this big extended family that she never knew about and she is like a very bookish character. Um, I think she might work in a bookstore maybe and like I, I do know that a lot of people have liked this um, but I just heard that the romance was kind of underdeveloped and I am also really I'm a hard sell on this kind of premise where it's like, oh, you think you know what you want from life, but you're actually wrong and a bunch of strangers <laughs> actually know what's good for you. So you're going to go into uncomfortable situations and be a better person for it. Like I just, that, that premise can be done well. I have read it done well, but this one did not give me the feeling that it was maybe done well. Um, plus again, I heard some things about like the characterization being very lackluster and the romance being not great. So yeah, don't think I want that one. And the next is What's Not to Love by Emily Wibberly and Austin Sigmund Broca. Um, I do really want to read these two authors' Shakespeare contemporaries, like Shakespeare-inspired contemporaries, um, but this one and their previous book I just don't think I would like, um, although this is the one that I specifically took off my TBR, the other one I was never interested in. Um, so this is like a hate to love book set between two academic rivals. They're at high school and they're both like very competitive like academically and everything. And this is another one that Kelly read and I just really don't think I would like it. Um, I am a very hard sell on hate to love in contemporary settings, even though hate to love is one of my favorite romance tropes. I think in contemporary books, it's like really, really hard to do it well, like to do it in a way that doesn't feel like an unhealthy relationship dynamic or that doesn't feel really ridiculous and petty. Like, oh, somebody stole the last cookie in the cafeteria and you're like mortal enemies now or something. Um, so yeah, I'm like picky about those anyway. And I just don't think I would like this one. And I remember Kelly saying in, in her wrap up that like, the only aspect that like did kind of sell her on the romance is she was like both of these are such terrible people that I wanted them to end up together so nobody else would have to date them. And I'm like yeah I don't want to read this. And then the last one I'm going to talk about is Among the Beasts and Briars by Ashley Poston. Um, this one is like I don't know if it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling or if I just got that vibe from like the cover and the title um, but it's like a fairy tale kind of feeling book. I thought the setting sounded interesting. I was interested in reading this one obviously but then, um, so I follow Alison Rose on Goodreads. I will link her down below. She does great reviews. They're always like really funny and really insightful. And there was a specific thing she mentioned about this one related to the romance. And it's a, a thing that can happen in a lot of like, like it's a thing that can happen in like romance subplots specifically to do with certain like fairy tales or fairy tale retellings. And I am just not down for that. Like I really don't want to read that. So that's basically the sole reason I took this off my TBR because that's just like a, an instant no for me with books. So that was my combination recent DNFs recently removed from TBR video. This probably was like a fairly long video because I ended up talking about some of these way more than I thought I would. So what else is new? Um, but please comment down below and let me know uh, like a recent book, a book that you've DNF recently or a book that you've taken off your TBR recently. I also think it's interesting to see like there's a very wide range of reasons that like people can DNF or like choose not to read books. Like I mean I had N.K. Jemison on here and I've loved the books I read from her but this particular series I just decided I didn't want to read that other book. Um, so I just think that's interesting. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!